Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial showing the steps you take making a simple scenery object in Blender 2.79 and how to export it to FSX using Model Converter X by Arno Gerritsen and available from www.scenerydesign.com Let's assume that you have Blender installed together with a Blender Work folder where your texture files are saved. I'm also going to assume you have a basic familiarity with Blender. That is object and edit mode, left and right mouse clicking, solid and texture display and so forth. We're going to make a fairly simple model of a porter cabin like you'd find on a building site. So we'll start with a basic cube. Let's increase its length by 3 and its height by 2 to get the right sort of proportions for the porter cabin. Let's also raise the model such that its base is level with the ground. We'll give the whole object a basic colour. On the right hand panel, left click the material icon and then left click the diffuse bar to choose a colour for the object. Left click somewhere near the centre of the rainbow circle and the object will turn grey. You can make it darker if you wish. Now we'll begin to apply the textures. With the object selected, go into Edit mode with the Face Select option. Right click the face of one of the longer sides and left click the material icon again. Left click the plus icon to change the chosen face's colour and left click new. Left click the diffuse bar and select an arbitrary colour. Left click on the assign button for this colour to appear on the chosen face. Next we'll replace this colour with an actual texture. On the right hand panel, left click the texture icon to the right of the material icon. Left click on new to select a texture. In the image selection below, left click open and navigate to the folder containing the texture file. Double left click the appropriate BMP file and it will appear as a thumbnail. To apply this texture, we need to UV unwrap it. So, with the mouse cursor on the object display panel, press U on the keyboard. The UV mapping drop down menu will appear and we left click unwrap. Now we have to change the screen layout to UV editing. So left click on the Screen Layout tab just to the right of Help and left click UV Editing from the drop down menu. The work area splits into two with the UV Editing to the left and the User Perspective displayed to the right. You may need to adjust the zoom level to see the whole object. On the UV Editing side we left click the Open button Navigate to the required folder and select the texture as before, which then appears. Now, in order for this texture to appear on the user perspective side, we must change the display mode from solid, which shows color, to texture, which allows the face to be displayed with its chosen texture. Viewing the textured model may be a problem if your lamps are not fully illuminating the face you're working on. In this case, the face is indeed dark. So go back into Object Mode and press the A key to deselect the porter cabin. Right click to select the lamp behind the object and then left click and drag it in front of the unlit face. Hopefully the face will now be illuminated. Manipulate the lamp's position if necessary. Reselect the porter cabin face and check if you need to modify the texture size and position. This is done by moving the reference vertices shown in the UV editing panel on the left hand side of the display. 
Adjusting the reference vertices allows you to optimize the texture fit to the face. Now we'll texture the end face. Return to the default view and select one of the end faces by right clicking. We'll now repeat the material setting and texture selection for this face. So left click the material icon then left click the plus icon to change the chosen face's color. Left click the new option and left click the diffuse bar to select an arbitrary color. Left click on the assign button for this color to appear on the chosen face. Again we'll replace this color with an actual texture. On the right hand panel left click the texture icon and then left click the new button. In the image section below, left click the open button and navigate to the folder containing the texture file. Double left click the appropriate BMP file and it will appear as a thumbnail. Now with the mouse cursor in the object panel, press the U key and left click unwrap. Then open the screen layout menu again and left click UV editing. As before, the work area splits into two, with the UV editing to the left and the user perspective displayed to the right. If the previously selected texture image still shows, then deselect this by left clicking the X tab. Again, left click the open button, navigate to the required folder and select the texture image. This texture should now appear in the user perspective to the right. Check that it is correct. You may have to modify the texture orientation and scale by moving the reference vertices shown in the UV editing panel on the left hand side of the display. And follow the same procedure for the other faces of the model as required. We now return to the default screen layout. We need to change the display mode to texture in order to see the applied textures. At this point we can check the appearance of the model. If you're satisfied you may export the model in Collada format. Left click File, hover over Export and left click Collada. Give the file an appropriate name and save in the Blender work folder. The next step is to use Model Converter X to convert the Collada model file for use in FSX. So fire up Model Converter X and left click Import. Navigate to the Blender work folder Set the file type to Collada and select our model. Hopefully it will appear as it did in Blender. You now have two choices for exporting the model to FSX. In the first option, Model Converter X has a Convert and Place Object option. Left click on the Wizards drop down menu to select this and it will show the Convert Wizard panel. Navigate to your Collada file and open it. It'll then display in Model Converter X. Now you will need to select the Output folder where Model Converter X will save the converted Collada model. You can select the main add-on scenery folder for this Output folder. To set the model's location, the FSX world position can either be entered directly, as I'm doing here, with the coordinates for Haverford West Airport, that's latitude 51.835 north, and longitude 4.961 west. Note that west is negative in FSX. Alternatively, the coordinates can be set using the built-in map, where the red crosshairs can be dragged to the desired map location. Here, the crosshairs show the model location that we've just entered.
We can now left click the Convert button for Model Converter X to save the model in the required BGL format and automatically convert the texture BMP files into their DDS equivalent. The BGL and DDS files will be saved in Scenery and Texture folders within the FSX Add-on Scenery folder by default or your chosen Scenery Destination folder. So, what does the Porter Cabin look like in FSX? We had placed the Porter Cabin object at Haverford West Airport in West Wales, just north of where the two runways intersect. And here it is. Alternatively, Model Converter X allows you to export the model as a library BGL object rather than a scenery BGL with a preset world position. Library object BGLs can be placed whilst FSX is actually executing, which is a big advantage when developing complex sceneries. First we must convert the model's texture BMP files to the preferred format for FSX, which is DDS. To do this with Model Converter X, we left click on Special Tools tab and then left click Texture Converter. In the pop-up panel, left click the top left Load button and navigate to the first texture file, which is in BMP format. Check that this is the correct image, then set the output format to DDS and left click the Save button. Save the DDS in the Blender Work folder. Do the same for the other texture, Load, Check and Save. The converted DDS files will now be found in the Blender Work folder. Left click the Export Scenery tab and click Save for the object to be converted and saved as a library BGL file. Note that unless you have specified a different folder, Model Converter X will save your BGL object back in the Blender work file. You will now need to copy and paste the library objects BGL and DDS files from your Blender work folder into the appropriate FSX folders. The simplest locations are the Scenery and Texture folders contained in FSX's main Add-on Scenery folder. So the object's library BGL goes to the Scenery folder and the two DDS files go to the Texture folder. Alternatively, you may choose to place them inside a folder of your own choosing within the Add-on Scenery folder. Again, remember that the BGL must be placed inside a Scenery subfolder and the DDS files inside a Texture subfolder. Remember also that this folder will need to be activated in the FSX Scenery Library. For you to see your model in FSX, the library object must be installed by giving it a world position. This can either be done with the Object Placement tool, which comes with FSX, or a payware add-on like Instant Scenery. Both these programs allow you to place your library object in FSX alongside existing scenery objects. As I said just now, this option is a better choice for developing more complex scenery. Well, that's about it. Hopefully you'll be able to develop some FSX scenery of your own. Both Blender and Model Converter X take a bit of getting used to, but once you've got the hang of things, you'll be able to develop quite complex scenery and derive a lot of satisfaction from doing so. Thanks very much for watching.